Hello, hi everybody. This is Marco Pezzola from Soluzione Ingegneria, SI Managing Director, and today we will speak about motorcycle. Well, the title of my presentation is Tire Wear Affecting Motorcycle Dynamic. So let's start with the motivation. So tire operative conditions change while riding. So this means you can see the wear level, pressure level, temperature or aging. And during the exercise of your bike, those quantities may change. Different operative conditions means different tire behavior, different motorcycle behavior by means of stability, longitudinal performances, and handling. So motorcycle behavior should be verified for all the plausible tires operative conditions. The target of my presentation uh, is focused on wear, and it is to investigate the effects of tire wear on both the lateral and the longitudinal motorcycle dynamic to propose a Pacheca MF modification, including the wear dependency. About the outlines, we will see how we did instrumentation about experimental outdoor test. We will see some longitudinal test and some indoor test. Uh, longitudinal magic formula modification, lateral outdoor test, lateral sensitivity analysis through numerical simulation, and finally, conclusions. So we took a bike with a high performance GPS. Then we did keep the bike with a, a steering uh, torque sensor done by strain gauges. Both the front and the rear will encoder, get by OE sensors. So about the longitudinal uh, outdoor test, what we did uh, at the very beginning was some straight line road, high grip surface, like dry tarmac. And we began some full braking maneuvers. ABS active, vehicle speed running at about 85 kpm, and some repetitions. What you can see is the speed uh, and the longitudinal acceleration time histories. So you can have an idea about the uh, braking test. What we realized pretty soon was how repeating the same test, uh, keeping the same bike, the same rider, same conditions, but with worn tire, the uh, achievable performance was, uh, were, were higher. So as you can see, the velocity reaches zero earlier than before. So in case of worn tire, we lower time to halt, lower braking distance, and uh, we get a higher average deceleration. So different types models have been tested and the trend has been confirmed. So it seems the evidence is warm tires perform higher braking deceleration. The several riders that attended the test uh, confirmed the experimental evidence. But why? In order to comprehend this phenomenon, we did some indoor tests in, through which we got a new tire, then a warm tire, and a 70% warm tire test over an MTS flat track machine. We did some tests to identify the longitudinal slope as function of the wear, the maximum friction through quasi-static uh, characterization and also the relaxation length was investigated. So about the first, uh, we uh, imposed uh, some quasi-static uh, uh, cycle 0.2 hertz with some sinusoidal profile with a period they said of five seconds. And we measure the longitudinal force as well as the uh, slip ratio. Finally, uh, the engaged friction coefficients mu x is computed and plot against the slip ratio. So out of the scattered plot, we can fit through the magic uh, formula fitting equations and getting the slope and the grip, the maximum grip, that is the mu max. So this is uh, how it looks like for a new tire and we can synthesize as a dot in a diagram where the X is this dead TW that is an index of uh, thread wear, given as the uh, different, the delta between the current uh, thread height and the original uh, thread height normalized. So is uh, the higher the TW, the more the tire is worn. 
So when it is new, we got a value for the longitudinal stiffness and uh, for the maximum friction. As soon as we start to test uh, the 30% uh, worn tire, uh, we got a second dot, uh, black, and then finally uh, the complete worn tire. So what we realize is a, an increasing of both the slope and the mumax. So if we repeat those tests uh, in different conditions of wear, uh, so this is the how, how those looks look like actually. So it's pretty interesting, and we can run the same test or similar test for the lateral relaxation length identifications. And now the test is a little bit quicker, so we have one second period, and uh, we arrive. Uh, to generate this cycle, we still do measure um, both the slip ratio and the longitudinal force, and accounting for the time delay, we can finalize uh, a diagram, scattered plot, with the hysteretical behavior, synthesizing the effect of relaxation length. Once again, we fit, we estimate relax relaxation length, of course, in meter, and we plot this quantity against the, the thread where um, quantity or index. The more the wear, the higher the relaxation length becomes. So now the trend um, accounting for several kind of tests. So if we go back to the braking test, uh, we uh, realized how uh, the higher braking performances observed during the outdoor test are due to higher grip, mostly I would say, Relaxation length and longitudinal stiffness have no perceivable effects instead. About the magic formula modification, so we uh, took into account uh, the evidence we got by the indoor, and as well as it is already available in the Pacheca 6.1 for the uh, inflating pressure uh, dependency, we built um, a similar shape, quadratic shape, accounting for the variation of wear. So PTX1 and PTX2 identify the coefficients, so those comes uh, through the interpolating of the longitudinal stiffness against the wear index. By operating the same, we can have the coefficients for longitudinal stiffness, relaxation length, and maximum friction to be properly considered inside of Pacheca equations. If no indoor tests are available, we also implemented an on-road characterization methodology. So the idea is you can keep your bike or your passenger vehicle also for car and truck, this is available, and uh, run some specific tests with a maneuver catalog. Got your scatter plot, in this case you see an example for uh, either the front and the rear uh, tire, and then by fitting those coefficients, we can populate TIR that can be later on uh, used in the simulations. We arrive to the lateral behavior, outdoor test. So what we, so as we saw before, we began by uh, experimental results and evidence. So what we did now was uh, to run the bike over a constant radius turn of about 35 meters and uh, the velocity was asked to slowly increase, maintaining uh, a very low lateral jerk, lower than 0 0.1 meter per second square per second. And you can see in the right uh, the uh, shape of the speed and the resulting uh, lateral acceleration for the new tire in black. So when we observe uh, an index uh, that is uh, easily perceivable by rider, we have to look this in the steering torque demand. Uh, this is actually what the rider is providing to be able to perform that kind of test at that speed, that conditions. So under the same hypothesis of radius, speed, and jerk, we can see in the right the diagram where the X label is the lateral acceleration from zero to eight meter per second square over second square. And in the Y label, you see the steering torque demand. Uh, we can see, we can appreciate the, you know, the standard, uh, the convention that is when positive, it is inside of the curve, when negative, it is outside of the curve. And we have uh, this uh, same rider, rider off, that means rider is imposed not to lean his body in the curve, 
nominal pressure nu tire black. The nominal pressure is kept at 2.5 bar. Um, and what you see is how the torque is negative. So for the very low, the rider shall push outside the curve. And if you want to increase, if you want to increase the velocity, that means to increase the lateral acceleration as well. You need to push more and more and more. But this is not a straight forward slope, but there is a, a certain moment at about four to five meters per second square in which there is a saturation of torque to about for this by 10 Newton per meter. And then if the rider wants to run faster, that means higher lateral acceleration, you need to reduce the steering torque, reduce, reduce till reaching a zero zone. So for this specific bike, uh, this bike uh, can run 7.5 meter per second square about with no torque applied by the rider because all the equilibrium is maintained between the steering torque contribution of contact forces as well as for the gyroscopic effects over the front wheel as well as the overturning and so on. So then it, we just appreciate a little that if he even want to go more, he start to push inside of the curve. Okay, so this is a pretty fingertip of the bike, of the tire. If you change your bike, you will have a different saturation point, different value, different value of acceleration. But more or less, all the bike behaves the same, just changing the shape and the ratio of this uh, diagram. Well, Does it happen in case we have the same rider, rider off, nominal pressure, but worn tire that you can see in blue? So what we uh, suddenly realized was that the shape was the same, but there was like a stitching, like a deformation in a higher level in magnitude of steering torque peaks. So it started from the same, but to perform the same lateral acceleration, the rider now needs to provide plus 50% more of steering torque outside the curve. Then the more it leans down, the more the lateral acceleration increases, then it goes back and they seems to be the same also because we need to remind how those uh, worn tire arrive by daily usage. So the sidewall are pretty new because uh, there is a preferential wear in the mid sections. So the more you lean down, the more you go to work in a thread that still uh, converges to uh, a new condition. So this is why the more you go down with the lean angle, the more the lateral acceleration you perform, the more similarity we see between curves. But anyway, in the working, in the daily working zone, we see an increasing of torque. We had the opportunity to repeat the test. Again, same rider, same bike, same proving ground, new tire, but low pressure. So we just deflate the pressure from 2.5 to do, uh, 2 bar. And uh, incredibly, what we noticed was still the same phenomena. So we observed an increasing of steering torque demand. And uh, um, just for this case, we were lucky because uh, at 2 bar, the pink and the blue appear the same. It's, it is just a coincidence. If you start to have 2.3, you will stay in between. If you go 1.5, you will even have more. So what is pretty good to highlight is where increases high torque demand, low pressure, high torque demand as well. So different type models have been tested as well as different pressure, different wear level. And worn tire implies higher outside the curve steering torque. All the riders confirmed these experimental evidence. So once again, why? Why does it happen? So the part, the, the brilliant part of the work is that to try to answer the question, we made a sensitivity analysis through numerical simulation. So the hypothesis, the assumptions were from longitudinal dynamic, uh, uh, we realized how if the wear increases, we see relaxation length, slope, and mu increasing as well. So it is uh, reasonable to assume that for something similar phenomena, uh, this happens also for lateral dynamics. So tire key parameters affecting lateral dynamics are 
relaxation length y in lateral, cornering stiffness, rolling stiffness for bike is mandatory to account for those, and the maximum lateral friction coefficients mu max y. Those are feeding the steady state lateral dynamics, the steering pad. So the hypothesis is cornering stiffness and rolling stiffness mainly could affect the increasing of the outside the curve steering torque. Uh, the relaxation length operates uh, for highly dynamic transient behavior that is not for the steady state. And the mu max uh, is uh, influencing the maximum lateral acceleration you can get. But we saw variations also in the mid zone of lateral acceleration. So this is why we focus the attention on those two parameters. So we uh, started to use the IPG motorcycle maker and the numerical analysis in particular. Rolling and the cornering stiffness sensitivity analysis has been performed. So we built the same scenario uh, and uh, initially uh, exploiting the decoupling effect of the numerical simulation, we began to uh, variate the cornering stiffness. So you will see a nominal value in blue plus 20% magenta, minus 20% in black. And uh, when plotting the same uh, performance of steering torque demand, negative outside the curve against the lateral acceleration, we suddenly realized how no perceivable variations were uh, resulting through the simulations. Instead, when uh, just the changing, the rolling stiffness, the cornering, sorry, the rolling stiffness or the camber stiffness, by speaking as the Pacheca nomenclature, still in the same variation, we immediately realized how this uh, uh, rolling stiffness may change the steering torque demand. And uh, starting by a nominal value given in uh, blue, when reducing the rolling stiffness, the steering torque, is reduced in magnitude, and uh, when increasing the rolling stiffness, the magnitude of steering torque is increased. The value are not exactly the same by the test, because we didn't build the same vehicle model. The target was to perform a qualitative sensitivity analysis in order to understand the direction. So from the numerical sensitivity analysis, as the rolling stiffness increases, the outside steering torque increases. So the hypothesis done seems to be correct, but why? Which is the phenomena beside of this. So let's uh, try to make uh, a comparison between what happens with a new tire, warm tire, and we do speak about self-aligning moments. Same turn, same speed, same lateral acceleration. So in this case, we have nominal tire rolling stiffness. Instead, as we realized uh, when we start to warm, we have higher tire rolling stiffness, as we realized by uh, the uh, also indoor evidence. Uh, so we also realize a higher steering torque demand. So let's try to understand where the genesis can be. So we are running a counterclockwise. We have a demand of FY total to the front wheel for both, of course, the scenarios. We have an inside the curve steering angle, of course. And in the left guy, in the left side, uh, being uh, the bike already leaned at a given angle uh, of rolling angle, camber angle, the tire is able to uh, increase, to generate uh, the formation and the shear that uh, generates FY due to roll. The same happens also for the right side. Being the rolling angle fix uh, to balance the lateral acceleration, we will have uh, higher um, share due to rolling because now the stiffness is higher. So for the same given angle, you will have K times angle, you will have higher uh, force by the imposed angle to balance the lateral acceleration. And as you can see in the left case, we are making the assumption how the lateral force given by roll is not enough to balance the trajectory. In the right case, it can be that it's even higher so what does it happen? In the left, uh, what we see is how a side slip angle happens that goes uh, to the outside the curve direction, and the deformation given by the side slip angle happens uh, to generate uh, the lateral force that uh, balance that uh, added to the previous one, uh, 
complete the demand. In the other case, the, the tires start to slip, to have a slightly angle inside of the curve, because now there is a flipping of the lateral force in order to balance the equations. So, but in the left, it results with a self-aligning moment that uh, the higher the demand, the more it is, and this means the rider um, will need to close the equation of steering to demand. In the right side, as you may see, uh, by the pneumatical trail, there is a moment inside of the curve. Okay, and the higher this is, the more the steering torque demand outside the curve needs is needed to balance the phenomena. So in this start to explain why the higher the stiffness, it means the higher the wear, the more the steering torque demand is needed. So where higher tire rolling stiffness, higher outside the curve steering torque demand needed to maintain trajectory. So we can also see this by this movie. And through the slow motion here, we see a pretty evidence sliding in the outside direction. So this is the case of the new tire. So I will arrive to my conclusion. So the general target of the presentation was to investigate the effects of tie wear on both the lateral and the longitudinal dynamic to propose a Pacheca MF modification, including the wear dependency. So we realized, we learned how increasing of wear, increasing of tire stiffness, maximum grip and relaxation length. MF modification has been proposed for uh, the longitudinal tire behavior. Outdoor test procedure can be used to overcome the lack of the indoor test and proceed with tire parameter identification for longitudinal dynamic only at the moment. It has been demonstrated how, both experimentally and numerically, the steering torque is strongly affected by tire rolling stiffness. In particular, the higher the stiffness, the more the outside the curve steering torque demand is needed. So thank you for your attention.